when you got home last night and took a deep breath after all the emotions and everything that was going on, what what part of the whole evening resonated the most? And, and what do you think will be top of mind about that evening, uh, given time? There was a couple of things. Uh, and thanks for asking the question, because it gives me a chance to, to think back and, and understand about last night. Number one, I honestly, when this season started, I didn't think 40 years was a big deal. I really didn't. And, and as we headed up into it, I didn't think it was that big a deal. But, you know, credit to Scott Reichert, who really spearheaded this effort and a lot of people associated with the White Sox and Jason Benetti, certainly for some of the things they did last night. But a couple of things jump out. Number one, there was only 19 other guys, Dan, who had been 40 years plus in the major leagues. And I joined that particular very exclusive club last night. And again, I had no idea. I still, when I look at those names, marvel at the quality of the broadcasters that are on that list. And each and every one of those 19, by the way, is in the Hall of Fame in the Ford Frick uh, Award unit. But I look at Vin Scully on, on that. I mean, it, it's just amazing to me. I look at Harry Carey and Jack Brickhouse and people who are very familiar to our Chicago audience. And some of the other stars, Jaime Harin, who broadcast to more people than anybody in the world because he did the Spanish broadcast for the Dodgers up and through the World Series every year, down into Central and South America. Uh, who are you know obviously baseball hotbeds? He he was a one, wonderful man, just great. He and Vince Scully would come with the Dodgers. It was terrific. That was that was very special to me to understand the uniqueness of this particular evening. That and the fact that uh, a lot of people got together, and made made some very very nice and I think heartfelt messages. And one of the things that really touched me was Jason's words most of the night who kept trying to impress upon me that this was really a special moment. This was a special game. This was a special celebration. And Jason is, number one, a wordsmith, and number two, a wonderful interviewer. He has a way with words, the likes of which very few broadcasters, number one, will ever achieve. And he's achieved it at a very young age, which is why I keep saying he is truly the Bob Costas of the next generation. And the irony is that two of the great young broadcasters were in the park on the same night, Joe Davis for the Dodgers, Jason for our Sox. And he was just wonderful last night. Um, I, I will go back and watch this again because I don't think I could really take in everything that this game was. But I, I do want to see it again. And, uh, you know, those were the couple of things that were really good. I, I talked with Tony La Russa before the game. I talked with Rick Hahn. Uh, a few of the people down on the field. Uh, it was just from start to finish, it was more than I could have expected uh, because I didn't expect anything. I didn't know what to expect. I got a call from Scott Reifer telling me that they were going to do this 40th anniversary celebration, and he didn't elaborate anything more. So it was pretty interesting, and I, I thought the one thing that was really great was that poster of all the good tweets from Twitter because you could have had one that looked like the left field wall with the bad tweets. So I'm, I'm I'm pretty happy they went with the good tweets on Twitter. I also loved you putting on the jacket, your jacket from Monday Night Baseball, <laughs> and Jason's reaction to how opulent it was on the inside of the lining. For those of us who couldn't <laughs> quite see it, what was he describing? I, I, I looked at it and I couldn't figure it out, but I, it had a design. I mean, it was one of those things. And I, I thought at the time, truly, it was a horrendous looking jacket. I thought I looked like a gigantic parakeet when I put it on, <laughs> which is why I said, which is why I said to Jeff Forty and Dennis Lewin, "Are we locked into these yellow jackets?" They said, "Yeah, we're pretty locked into these." And uh, I, I guess I was really surprised at how much that jacket had shrunk over the years. Wow. Amazing. I mean, I couldn't even come close to fitting it on. So, yeah. You know, closets tend to do that, from what I understand. It's oh, happened to yeah. a there's lot no, of people there's no the last couple of years. There's no chance that I was bigger. There's a there's a really good chance that the jacket shrunk. Yeah. So that's uh, that's it. And it, it hangs in Harry Carey's uh, um a Navy peer and Grant Deporter was nice enough. And he also got them to do a little something that was really special. He got them to be on tape saying that if they lost the jacket, they would give him $10 million. And I said, okay, well, we'll split it. I don't think it's worth quite that much, but it is a, it is a timepiece into uh, the years past. And it was, it was the first jacket that I wore on the air. 
a special night indeed. Stoney, this was great. Thanks so much. Okay, thank you. And uh, guys, uh, have a uh, have a good rest of the show. And uh, I will talk with you down the road, certainly. Let's watch a good game again tonight, Stoney. Thank you. Steve Stone, who has uh, been so important not just to Cubs baseball and to White Sox baseball, but as I reiterated earlier, had, had, at a key time, the this station, for him to join this station when he did, for those of us who, who were here for the process and thinking about, hey, do you think, you think Steve Stone would really want to come to work for us? And when that began, the relationship that we had and all the baseball talk that, that he did on these airwaves for so long, it's just, I think that everybody here is proud to be even a small part of that story. Oh, I, I can't agree with that more. It's been a joy knowing him.